We all know that quantum computing is going to change the world. It's literally the most cutting edge technology out there. And you want to be part of the next computing revolution. You say things like, oh, wow, quantum computing combines so many of my interests. It's like the perfect career for me. But is that really true? Hi, everyone. My name is Ari, and I'm a quantum hardware engineer at IBM Quantum. And I work on developing qubit control electronics so that we can build bigger, more scalable, and actually useful quantum computers for the world. I started out just like you, trying to figure out how I could actually break into the field of quantum computing and build a career out of it. And it was through very hard work and deliberate dedication to developing skills that were practically useful in the field that enabled me to actually do it. Working in the quantum computing field is not actually what it seems like at first when you just start learning quantum computing. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about some thoughts and questions to help you determine if quantum computing is for you and help you understand what you need to start doing now to start being ready for a career in quantum computing. So let's get started. My problem with quantum computing education right now is it literally just focuses on like algorithms, circuits, and quantum information theory, right? Okay, so all of that is very, very important. But realistically, it is just a fraction of the total effort out there in quantum computing. So ultimately what ends up happening is people get the wrong impression about what they actually need to start doing to build a career, to get a job, to get into grad school, to get a PhD position. Most work in quantum computing right now is actually at a huge lab with like 20 or 100 or hundreds of people trying to actually develop and build the hardware to actually build a quantum computer. There are people that have to measure and test and run experiments on the system. Ultimately, this kind of falls under the experimentalist and the experimental quantum computing side. Most of the funding, most of the people, most of the money is getting dedicated towards these physical experiments and the real hardware. Yes, I'll say it again. The algorithms, the quantum information theory, the applications are exceptionally important. They are the backbone of the technology that we work on. However, we don't have any of that if we don't have somebody to build the system, somebody to make the quantum computer a reality, somebody to build a quantum computer big enough that we can actually do something with, right? And so that's why you have all the funding and all the people mainly dedicated towards actually developing the physical technology. And so you might be asking, okay, why when I Google, okay, getting started with quantum computing, it's all multiplying matrices and quantum information theory and gates and matrix algebra. I don't know. That's why I'm making this video is because I think that there is a disconnect with what is happening in the education and what is actually needed in the industry. So you're telling me that quantum algorithms and learning kiss is not the only path into quantum. Yes, I'm telling you that. And so what are the other options? What are some of the other things that you can do to contribute to quantum computing? What is it really like when you're in there? What do you need to know? I'll give you an example from me. I work in control electronics, like I said. So this is the device that actually allows us to talk to the qubits, right? Actually something that allows us to send data and read data back from the qubits. I have a quantum computer and I use that quantum computer and the qubits in that quantum computer in order to characterize the performance of the novel and experimental control electronics that our team works on. So in school, I had studied a little bit of extra quantum stuff, like you know a quantum engineering course and some very basic quantum physics and um, a quantum algorithms class, right? But ultimately my focus was not learning quantum physics and learning quantum algorithms and studying KISS. I doubled down on learning the hardcore engineering stuff and the hardcore electrical engineering stuff that enabled me to do my job now. And now I had to learn a lot of stuff about superconducting qubits and some of the little nitty gritty stuff about the qubits to actually do well and deliver results in my job. But that's all things that I learned kind of on the job. Like when I identified what exactly I needed to know in order to make a good contribution. And surprisingly enough, that's actually the vast majority of our team right now, is there are people who aren't necessarily experts in quantum or quantum physics or quantum computing, but they're really, really, really good at one particular thing in engineering. And they're able to make a substantial contribution to developing quantum technology and quantum computing as a whole. Okay, so what are some examples of some of these jobs that these people are doing? Well, okay, so kind of just on the team that I work on and work with, there are people that are analog and digital integrated circuit designers. There are people that are electrical engineers with a lot of experience measuring and testing and debugging things. There are RF engineers, there are computer architects. There are people who write firmware. There are people who write software. There are people who understand cryogenics, people that 
our mechanical engineers that design little physical mechanical fixtures to allow us to mount our experiment into the dilution refrigerator. I can go on and on. There's tons of different people and tons of different ways to contribute to just my aspect of the little sector of quantum computing that I work on. There's much, much more. Okay, cool. So there's a lot of things that I can do and quantum's really cool and it's gonna change the world, but ultimately you need to know what you're getting yourself into to a certain degree. And you need to know how you can optimize your skills and optimize what you do with your education in order to actually get a job or get a research position in a lab or get a PhD position. Just saying that you want to work in quantum computing because it's cool and it combines a lot of your interests is not enough. You need to dig a little bit deeper to understanding if this is really for you and if you are doing the right actions to get to where you want to be. So going through some of these exercises right here might be saving yourself a lot of pain and a lot of failure in the future. So I want you to ask yourself the following questions. Now, seriously, I want you to take this seriously. I want you to go, I'm gonna ask you these four questions, right? I want you to write them down. I want you to go to a cafe. I want you to get a coffee. I want you to sit there for an hour or two and actually like think about this, do some research, try to understand the questions because putting in the work now to answer these questions is going to save you potentially years of your life. All right, so the first question that you need to ask yourself is what are you interested in and what technical work do you enjoy doing? And so ultimately this, kind of qu this question kind of boils down to what do you wanna be doing on a daily basis? Do you like software? Do you like running experiments? Do you like computer architecture? Do you like integrated circuit design, right? You gotta figure out what is the thing that you like. And if that thing is, I like quantum algorithms, I like quantum information theory, that's excellent, that's wonderful. But ultimately you have to ask yourself the question of what do you actually like doing and what technical work do you wanna be doing on a daily basis? So question number two is what do I need to learn and what experiences do I need to get to become really good at the technical thing that I'm interested in? Being really good at what you're interested in is ultimately what gets you the job at the end of the day. Don't just do something because other people are interested in it. Don't just do something because other people are doing it, right? You need to understand what you are interested in. And you do that by living your life and having experiences that are unbiased away from what other people are trying to force you to do or telling you to do. You might say, Ari, I don't know what I want to do yet. I, I don't know exactly what I'm interested in. I'm interested in a lot of things. Okay, that's okay. That's totally okay. I was just like that too, just figuring it out. And ultimately, if you don't know, the solution is to keep learning, keep gaining experiences, right? gain experiences and actually go live your life, go and join something so that you can start to understand what you actually like doing. So that's like joining a lab, joining clubs, doing a summer research somewhere, going to hackathons, joining the robotics team. I don't know, literally anything that helps you get experience, talk to people in the field, talk to other students, right? Helps you understand what the actual field is like and helps you understand if that's something that you want to be doing long term. I know that some of these experiences are actually hard to attain and kind of competitive. So subscribe to the channel here. I'm going to be talking more about how you can maybe get some of these in the future. All right. So now we're on to question number three. You've already answered, what do I want to do with my life? You already answered, how do I get really good at that thing? Now the question is, how do I apply my technical interest to quantum computing? Ultimately, you need to understand if there is a need in quantum computing for what you actually want to do. And you know what the good thing is? That most likely, no matter what you're interested in, you can apply it to quantum computing in some way. I mean, quantum computing is so wonderful because it is just completely interdisciplinary. We need people from all across the stack, all across backgrounds. It basically doesn't matter what you study almost, you can find something that is applicable to quantum computing. I mean, let me just give you an example, right? There are literally, teams dedicated to just making YouTube videos on the Kiskit YouTube channel for quantum. You could be a video producer, you know, you could be pretty much anything and, and contribute to quantum, but ultimately you need to understand how your technical interest can actually contribute to quantum computing. And so now this leads us to the fourth and final, and maybe even the most important question is why do you want to work in quantum computing? What are your reasons? and really try to dive deeper than, oh, I think it's really cool, it's a cutting edge technology, it's gonna change the world, and it combines a lot of my interests. Those were my reasons starting out too, so it's okay to think like that right now, but try to go a little bit deeper. And if you really don't have a good answer to three and four yet, that's okay. Try to learn and research as much as you can to try to figure it out. These questions are ultimately a guide to help you understand if quantum computing is right for you, and help you understand what you need to be doing to achieve whatever goal that you've set, to get 
that job, to get a research position, to get a PhD position, whatever. To beat all the competition, and quantum is a very competitive field and we need very good people, you need to have a tangible skill and you need to be really, really good at that skill. So everyone, I encourage you to accomplish more in a week of deliberate effort than most people do in an entire year just kind of sleepwalking through their life, right? Ask yourself these questions. Do good work, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.